Today, we're talking about one of the most common personality disorders, borderline personality disorder. Stay tuned. First, a quick disclaimer while you find your way to the subscribe button. We've talked about problems with self-diagnosis before. If you give someone a hammer, a lot of things start looking like nails. Remember kids, we don't diagnose our friends. Picture this. You've been dating someone for a while and things seem to be going well. So well that you've been inseparable, constantly texting each other all day long, video chatting when you can't be together. But this past week, you've been really wrapped up in work and school, and you really needed some time to focus distraction-free, so you turned off your phone in the morning. When you turn it back on in the afternoon, you're greeted with dozens of messages that start off nice, and then move to concerned, and then take a nasty turn, eventually ending with you being called horrible things and told what an awful person you are, followed by threats of suicide. Everything turned on a dime. One minute you were Hermione and the next minute you were Voldemort. If this sounds familiar, you might be witness to the challenging side of borderline personality disorder, or BPD. A disorder characterized by intense, unstable relationships, mood swings, and high risk of self-harm. Often there is an intense fear of rejection, and when a relationship is perceived to be threatened in some way, it engages strong emotional reactions. You may feel you're walking on eggshells so as not to set the person off. It's natural to have strong feelings in your relationships, especially family and romantic relationships. It's also natural to be afraid of rejection and experience negative emotions when things are difficult. However, like I discussed in my video on what are mental disorders, shameless plug. When those normal tendencies start to cause undue distress and interfere with your social relationships and life functioning, they might be indicative of a disorder. I say this so that maybe you can relate to individuals with BPD and realize that the things they are experiencing stem from thoughts and behaviors that everyone has, but they've been pushed to the extreme so as to become harmful. In the case of BPD, many times the extreme reaction to try and protect the relationship is exactly the thing that winds up threatening it. The more the other person pulls away, the more the fear of rejection is validated and the stronger the emotional reaction becomes. Then if that relationship ends, that validates the fears of abandonment in future relationships. And so the cycle goes on. How prevalent is BPD? Roughly 6%, or 1 in 17 people in the United States are estimated to have BPD during their lifetime. As far as we can tell, it affects men and women both equally, but women are far more likely to go and seek help. The vast majority of these individuals will not seek or get treatment, and for those that do, there's a high likelihood that it will get misdiagnosed as something else. This is dangerous because the suicide risk is 50 times higher among BPD population compared to the general population. This is a common yet serious disorder and we need to improve awareness of this condition. There are stigmas surrounding this diagnosis, but educating people about the diagnosis and what it means actually can help reduce symptoms in those people affected by the disorder. So accurate diagnosis is key to improving outcomes. Okay, well, what are the diagnostic criteria? The first set of symptoms of individuals with BPD are affective or emotional in nature. Especially characteristic is intense mood swings. Because of this, BPD is often misdiagnosed as bipolar disorder. However, the mood swings seen in borderline are more frequent and don't last as long. Unlike bipolar, borderline tends to emerge in adolescence or early adulthood, but symptoms improve with age. Borderline episodes are often triggered by external events, especially perceived rejection or abandonment. The second set of symptoms has to do with impulsive behaviors. Many individuals with BPD, somewhere around 60 to 78%, have recurrent suicide attempts. 90% have episodes of self-harm, and things like overdoses and cutting are very common. Things like gambling, spending, binge eating, and substance abuse are all associated with BPD. 
The third classic sign of BPD is interpersonal issues, especially in a pattern of unstable relationships. One minute you're on a pedestal, the next minute they're tossing you in the gutter. Idealization and devaluation of the other individual is the best predictor of a diagnosis. For women, less than half of them marry and even fewer have children. They may become socially isolated to avoid abandonment or rejection. Also, identity disturbances are common. Individuals with BPD often experience sudden or frequent changes in goals, beliefs, sexual identity, taking on the identity of other people close to them. Now, to be clear, exploring identity in adolescence is good and is even to be expected, but it's a problem if there's dependence on others for a sense of identity rather than developing your own. The fourth diagnostic category is cognitive symptoms. Not all, but up to half of BPD individuals may have paranoia or hallucinations similar to schizophrenic episodes, but they tend to be shorter and these happen when they're stressed. Depersonalization and derealization are also sometimes observed. There are some real challenges in diagnosing BPD. Most of these symptoms overlap with other disorders, like major depression, bipolar, schizophrenia. It's only in combination and based upon the development and time courses that distinguish them as borderline personality disorder. If you look at the list of symptoms in the DSM, there are 256 different combinations of symptoms. This ambiguity means clinicians can sometimes be hesitant to commit to a BPD diagnosis. However, BPD is not responsive to the typical treatment for depression, bipolar, or antipsychotic medications. So misdiagnosis is a real issue. What about treatment? Well, there's good news and bad news. Which do you want first? This is a video and I can't actually hear your answer. So I'm just gonna tell you the good news first. BPD symptoms tend to reduce over time and it does respond to standard psychotherapy techniques. Several therapies have been developed specifically to deal with BPD, which means that it is treatable so long as you have the right diagnosis and a clinician who has the right specialization to treat it. Well, that leads to the bad news. Because it's often misdiagnosed, it often leads to ineffective treatments. There are heritability estimates for BPD at around 40%, which suggests there's a strong genetic component that puts people at risk for developing BPD. Many individuals go undiagnosed and untreated, and it is costly to them and the people who care about them. So to recap, borderline personality disorder is a common disorder that is based on thoughts and behaviors that we all experience, just taken to an extreme. It is highly stigmatized, but people who have BPD aren't bad people. They aren't inherently violent or manipulative. They're afraid that they're gonna lose something that they care about, and that pushes them to their emotional limits. Now, being pushed to the limit is dangerous with a high degree of self-harm. The good news is it's treatable, and awareness of this disorder and early diagnosis are keys to successful treatment. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, consider subscribing to stay up to date with all things psychology, and until next time, keep thinking. Okay, we don't diagnose our friends, but we totally diagnose our friends, am I right?